So in today's video, I'm going to go over the two different ways to live stream from the FX30 and talk about in which situations you'd want to use each different way. By the way, if you're new here, my name is Jeff Fagan. I'm a filmmaker, DP, and content creator based in South Florida. I do a lot of different various video gigs down here in South Florida, and live streaming, especially with cameras like the FX30, is something that year over year I've had to do more and more for my clients. Now I picked up the FX30 not just to live stream, but it is a really great camera to live stream with, especially because it has the full size HDMI, but also has really decent battery life and amazing autofocus. So the first of both ways is going to be the more basic and easy way, which is using the USB-C port on this camera. Now, if you use the USB-C from the FX30, you actually just hook it up directly into your computer. And if you have a Mac, when you turn on the camera, it will actually install the drivers right from the camera. Once you're hooked up to your computer, the drivers are installed. The computer will actually power your camera through the USB-C, and then it'll also act as a webcam. So whether you're using StreamYard, OBS, Zoom, whatever you want to use, to live stream or use this camera as a webcam, it will show up not only in video, but in the audio settings as well. So you're gonna to wanna to change your video and audio settings to make sure that you are grabbing it from the FX30. Now, if you're using a USB microphone, you're not gonna have the audio come from the FX30. Make sure you choose that microphone. But in my situations, I'm piping in the audio directly into the FX30, especially when I'm using wireless labs. So it's easy to just grab the audio from the camera itself. By the way, if you're getting value out of today's content, please make sure to hit that subscribe button below to keep up to date with the latest content like this. So if you need to stream in higher resolution, you need a 4K stream, you're streaming with multiple cameras, then you're probably going to want to use the camera's HDMI port as your source to stream. So the first thing you're going to want to do with your FX30, if you've never live streamed via the HDMI before, is you're going to want to go into the menu, go down to the setup, and hit menu 12, which is external output. You're going to want to make sure that your HDMI info display is off. You don't want to have the operating system, the menu items, or any of the UI from the camera show up on your feed. You want it to be a clean feed, and then also by doing that, you'll also be able to see the LCD screen on your camera in addition to outputting via the HDMI. If you don't, it's going to output everything over the HDMI. Then the next step involves, unfortunately, two pieces of external equipment. One's going to be basic and HDMI cord, but the other is going to be a capture card. Now, if you're going to just be streaming with one camera, then I recommend just getting a small capture card like the Elgato Cam Link 4K. It's just a little USB type dongle that happens to be an HDMI capture card as well. And once you download the software for Elgato Cam Link, get the drivers on your computer, it's fairly simple to use, just like using your camera as a webcam. Now, if you're going to be using multiple cameras, then the really popular option to do that is using Blackmagic's A10 Mini. Now, if you get an A10 Mini, not only does it work as a capture card, it'll hook up directly to your computer, but it also lets you switch between four different cameras or eight different cameras if you get the more advanced model. Now, if you're gonna be switching with that many cameras, you're probably gonna want higher resolution than 720p. The A10 Mini does output 1080. I think that is going to be one of the limiting factors of the A10 Mini is if you're going to need a switch that's relatively affordable. The A10 Mini is really all there is. There isn't anything doing 4K, but at the same time, if you're going to YouTube, you're going to Facebook, they don't accept 4K streams right now anyways. So I think the only people who are going to be needing this 4K option are going to be on the higher end of production. So the negatives to going the HDMI route is you are going to need a capture card, which means you're going to need to buy another device. And then you also need to power the camera. I've been powering it through USB-C and it hasn't really been an issue. You can use the battery, of course, but then if you power it through its USB-C, you just don't have to worry about the camera shutting off, especially if your live stream is more than an hour. So these are the two ways, pretty simple to live stream from the Sony FX30. I think right now it's one of the best cameras to use for live streaming. Of course, I wouldn't buy buy it if all you're doing is live streaming. There's probably more affordable options out there. But I think if you're a videographer or you're looking to add an FX30 into your cinema arsenal because you're using a lot of other FX cinema cameras in Sony's lineup, then I think the FX30 is a really great option to also use as a live stream camera when you need it. If you have any questions about the FX30, questions about live streaming, make sure to put them in the comments below. If you have any topics you want me to cover in future videos, make sure to ask down there as well. If you want to see more content on the FX30, I have a playlist that I'll put at the end of this video and in the description. And if you got knowledge and value out of today's video, please make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell to keep up to date with the latest videos from the channel. Until next time, my name's Jeff Fagan. Thank you for watching, everybody, and I will see you in the next video.